This message is intended as a reminder that we are not licensed professionals, not psychiatrists or psychologists. If you have a serious problem, please seek professional help. The National Suicide Hotline is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. There's some damsels in the DM. Yes, queen. <laughs> Tell us what's the vibe. Huh? What's the vibe? There's some damsels in the DM. DM? Who are you? Please tell us what's the vibe. DMs, DMs, <laughs> yeah, we see them. Yeah, we read them. DMs, DMs, we don't need them. We just leave them. Please. Yeah. It's going down in the DMs. Bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Damsels in the DMs. Hello, hello. Hello. How's Hello. everybody doing today? What's up? Good. I am still in Chicago and it is pretty gloomy out. Yeah, that's that's the updates on my end. Excited to take a little time off from work and take a little vacation. So I'm pretty pumped about that. What's going on with you, Lauren? You know, I am just chilling, living life. Um, I had a really funny audition the other day that was for a co-star and literally I like had barely anything to say in it but my acting teacher who's also Asha's acting teacher came up with a really fun idea because I worked on it with him to use my hair as a blanket to convey um like being embarrassed so like for the people watching on YouTube I'll give you a glimpse but basically like the girl is like really embarrassed right so he was like this is what you should do And I've decided this is my new thing. If I just like don't want to talk to people, I'm just gonna like cover my hair. Like this is my new avoidant behavior technique. (laughs) I wish I had that. I don't have my long hair anymore. But if I did, I would do the same thing. I'll try it out. But what was really crazy was so he was like, Yes, this is a brilliant idea. Like, this is what we should do. Then he was like, Oh, and by the way, because Osh knows this, but I have a toxic trait of going hiking alone. Um, really clears the mind, but not the safest thing. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, with that long hair, I would recommend not running in a ponytail at night. Because apparently people have been grabbing girls by taking their ponytails and like <gasps> kidnapping them. Oh, wow. oh my God. Lauren, oh. please be yeah, She has a very toxic trait. And one time she went in the evening when it was like getting dark. And then her car it was a flat tire, dead flat tire. And she was stranded in the middle of nowhere with no cell service with a flat tire. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, please don't do that. And I like was trying to hotspot from my computer because I wasn't getting any service. So I'm like literally running around the woods with my Celine bag and my laptop, like I messaging like help SOS in the woods. <laughs> It would only happen to her too. Like that is such a classic Lauren scene. Yes, yes. A 100 <laughs> very classic. Speaking of classic behavior, today we are addressing the notion once a cheater, always a cheater. Now, I I was counting before this episode and I think I've been cheated on at least three and a half times. By the same person? Questionable. No, 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 no. Oh. <gasps> Doing by the same person. Then let's <laughs> number guys then we were really tacking it on (laughs) and you know that's three and a half that I know about it could be more because I've mentioned this but like throughout high school and into the beginning of college I was a serial dater and like when one becomes a serial dater one does not always make the best decisions of who you're dating you know because serial dating mentality is like first person who will be my boyfriend you know and I would like kind of say that I was not going to be very intimate with a person unless they were my boyfriend. Because like, to me, having a boyfriend was like what made me complete. And like, it's kind of weird to me because you would think that in my time alone would be when I like developed my self-confidence and was able to like really, you know, achieve being okay, being alone and also like being okay with myself. But like, weirdly enough, I have been able to find that in my relationship with Brian. And I think like my relationship with Brian is also the first relationship that I know that I would be okay without Brian. And I don't think that that's like a reflection of like our relationship not being strong. I think that's like more of a reflection of me now being strong and me Mm -hmm. just knowing that like I would be okay alone. 
when I wasn't before. So when I was cheated on previously, like the part that I regret the most about it was that I wasn't able to like cut things off right away. Like I would stay in the relationship and like be willing to like give people second chances. And in my experience with like the second chances after being cheated on, it never worked out because I think sometimes cheating is almost like a person's way of getting out of a relationship that they're also not happy in, you know, like, cause yeah. they're not able to talk to you about the problems in the relationship. And I think that like, you know, as much as I want to say that like the people I dated were all terrible, a lot of them weren't terrible. A lot of it was just that like, I was so needy and I wasn't confident in myself that I think that like that version of who I was, was probably also like not the most pleasant to date. And like, I'm willing to admit that I don't, obviously I did not deserve to be cheated on. Nobody ever does. But I also Mm -hmm. think that sometimes like it is hard to just break up with somebody because I think that a lot of it is like, do you think you're going to be okay outside of this relationship? And sometimes we cheat because we're not happy, but we're not okay saying like, Hey, I want to break up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm curious though. You said three and a half. I'm... Yeah. What's the half? <laughs> okay. 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 Three times we're like very much verbatim cheating on the book. The half was that, okay. So this was again, occidental. I was dating a guy. And like, to be fair, I was also toxic in this relationship, like needed a lot for him. I was not happy, like with who I was when I was at Occidental, I was extremely insecure. And during this phase of my life, the guy broke up with me and we were like not fully broken up because it like, it literally happened. Like that night we were still like, kind of like talking things, like maybe trying to work things through. He hooked up with a girl who I was like kind of friends with and also had class with. And like, like oh, I said, God. Occidental is so freaking small that it's like, it's really hard to like hook up with like mutual people or whatever and not have it get back to the person. So like, then we were like officially done, but I had class with that girl for the rest of the semester. Also, like, I remember like, I was just in such a low, low place during the semester because like the classes at Occidental were 12 people. It was an acting class. And it's really hard, as you know, like when you're acting to be vulnerable, when you don't feel comfortable, like in the atmosphere that you're in. So like I would go, I wasn't dating the guy anymore. Like it ended on like really bad terms. They were now, they hooked up once and were fully in a relationship. Like I call it a half because like it wasn't full on cheating because like we were technically breaking up, but like they got into a relationship like the day that we broke up. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It was just so bad because I saw, I saw them every single day, you know, like I said, serial dating, you don't always even like care that much about that person because you're not choosing them for them. You're choosing them because you need a partner. So Mm -hmm. like, and that this relationship was classic case for me. It was not because I was like choosing them. And honestly, like the only relationships that I feel like really deeply affected me in my life were the ones that I definitely chose them. And I was not choosing them out of like a serial dating habit, but the half, I feel like affected me somehow more than some of the like verbatim cheating situations because they entered a relationship so quickly. And like, sometimes like I don't know, seeing the person move on to another relationship is even harder than like the actual act of cheating. But then it also makes you question, like, were they already talking before you guys broke up? You know, like, was there an overlap between you and him? Because Mm -hmm. technically it's probably not a half, it's probably a full. Right. But yeah. And then also, have you ever taken someone back after them cheating on you? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Given them a second chance, they could turn into like the most angel person and like not, you know, like, It could be a whole once a cheater, never a cheater, like could be that, but the trust issues that you have with that person, it just like, that is worse than being cheated on. I feel because the after effects of it, when you're still with that person, you're not trusting them. You're always wondering where they are. If they're not with you 24 seven, you are like an anxious wreck. And then even if they are with you, if they're on their phone, you're wondering for the whole time who are they texting what are they doing on their phone I think it's way more I mean cheating being cheated on is terrible to begin with but then like staying with that person giving them a second chance and then not being able to get get over it fully oof danger 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 yeah so did you that you stayed with somebody after being cheated on yeah yep 
I did. And it was everything I described and worse. Like I just, it, this also was a person that was heavy into gaslighting me, very toxic relationship and just the biggest gaslighter I've ever met. So even when I, the the way I found out was we were actually out um, at a bar or something. I don't remember. And I was telling him a story about this guy that I was dating previously who lived next to the bar. And because this guy that I was dating was not mentally there he took it as I was cheating on him. I don't know how he got from point A to point Z, but like he somehow like put that in his head and then went with it and was just like acting crazy. And it's so crazy to the point that I was like, this is really weird. Like, I feel like people who act like that, like something's going on with them and they're just projecting onto me. So um, he went home and I went back to my apartment and his iPad was by my bed. I'm not someone who goes into people's things. I don't check people's phones. I've never been that person to like snoop around, but something was telling me to go into that iPad and look at the messages. And there it was the girl that I was super insecure about the girl that I was always like, are you sure that, you know, like I just knew it was that I had a feeling about this girl from the beginning. And he's gaslighted me about this girl many times. And then I found it. I found the messages and I didn't even have to ask what happened because she, the messages between them, she detailed everything that happened (gasps) in the text messages, which was weird. She was texting him and it's like, when, when this happened and then when this, and I'm like, she's literally detailed everything that happened. And I was just like, wow, like, I don't even need to ask him what happened because it's all there. Why do you think she did that? Like, she was probably just reminiscent. I I don't know. It was like for her to like, remember, I I don't know. I don't know why she was doing that, but um, it was very helpful. And thank you, whoever. I forgot her name. To be honest, this whole relationship I've put out of my head, but I am grateful that she did that because I wouldn't have known. And I could have, he could have just lied to me about it, which he tried because I, that same night I got super pissed. I was blowing up his phone, texting him, trying to call him. He blocked my number. And so that he could, he he blocked my number and blocked me on Instagram or something so that my messages wouldn't get to him because later when he was explaining why he did that, he was like, cause I was trying to sleep and you kept blowing up my phone. What? But anyway, so he came over the next day to get his stuff because I was like, come get your shit. Like me and my cousin who was living with the time packed up all his stuff and like I had it for him to come and get. He came back. He looked super hungover and I was like, you're not going to say anything. And he was like, no. And I was like, you have no explanation for why. And then he tried to say that something was wrong with his iCloud. And these messages are from years ago and they're just coming in now. And I was like, you really think I'm an idiot, dude? <laughs> like, come on. But he was a master manipulator. I was also very vulnerable. I was one of those in those situations where I don't know how I could be myself without this person outside of this relationship. Um, and I was very much attached to this person. And so, yeah, got back together with him. And after that, I was like, I shouldn't have done that. Like, I should have just, you know, I should have just let him be miserable, like, not being in this relationship because he really tried hard to get back and I should have just let him just be miserable and not gone back because after that I was like super super insecure about every little thing and like I had to make sure that he was with me 24 7 and if he wasn't then I'd be freaking out Jesus. yeah and how did that but, relationship end um it ended it was like really bad my whole family got involved and I moved to Chicago away from him oh wow oh. now I know yeah which you know which one it is yeah you know exactly yeah which one it is. but yeah this one was a really bad one this one goes down in the books man. like How long uh, you for? um one and a half years maybe two but I don't know this could have been not the first time that it happened you know like it could he could have been doing it and this is just the first time he got caught. Mm-hmm. But in my head, I've always believed that once a cheater, always a cheater, just because from all of my friends' relationships and everything that I've seen, that's just what I believe. But I'm also a strong believer in change and people changing. But I know the types of people that are the once a cheater, always a cheater. And the types of people that once cheated, but now never again, I've learned from it and I've changed. And it's just two very different types of people. And the ones that I date are the once cheater, always a cheater type people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Lauren mentioned something too where it's a sign that like the person just is ready to either make a change or just move on and i think it just comes down to communication i mean it would be so much more healthy to have the conversation to be open and honest but not many people yeah. at that level of like willingness to communicate what is actually going on Ugh, that's frustrating Ugh. <laughs> yeah, it is. And also, I believe there's two types of cheaters. One that's like one of those compulsive liars that are cheating because they either have an addiction or they, they're they just not happy in the relationship, but still want to keep this person around because 
they're like the wife material, you know, like the, I'll do whatever for you material. So it's nice to have that, but then, then I can go around with whoever I want. I think there's those types of people, like one type of cheating. And the second type is the ones that it was a mistake. And I believe that there can be mistakes that happen and they feel like super horrible about it. Maybe it was like a drunken night out and there's something happened and they're just super guilty. They admit it to their partner and they're like, Hey, I'm really sorry. Like, this is what happened. I know it's terrible. Um, but I cheated on you da, da, da. and they admit it. I think those are two types of people and two types of cheating. And the second one, I feel like for me is a little more excusable more than the first one. But I mean, yeah. it really depends on what they share too. Cause like, you know, exactly. Like, exactly. Mm-hmm. Can't trust, can't trust these people. No. Yeah, I agree. And I also think that like the thing about cheating is that once it happens to you, it carries with you into your following relationships. And like, yes. it's really hard to shake the effects of being cheated on when you move on to your other relationships. And like you're saying, I 100% believe that good people cheat. Cause I think that like, like I was saying, like cheating happens, either there's people who are serial cheaters, but then there are people who aren't happy in relationships. They're not happy with themselves. They're going through something. We all like make mistakes. And I, I definitely believe in that. But I just think that like when you move on to other relationships after having been cheated on, it's really important that you find somebody who meets you where you are, because like you are going to have trust issues. Like I remember when I first started being serious with Brian, there were definitely trust issues. Like I was definitely any time that he would go out with his friends, I wanted him to be texting me. He would be focusing out on people because Brian like goes out and he just is like so present with the people that he's with. He's not the type of person who's going to be on his phone. And that was really hard for me when we started dating, because like, I wanted to be like kept in the loop. And I think like through his support and through him, like meeting me at like, sometimes like my ridiculous requests, like texting me when he's out, you know, like he would do those things to get me to a place like where I am, where I was comfortable so that it kind of like got me over the hump of like PTSD from being cheated. So now like we don't have those like weird things. Like I'm not worried about when he goes out now it's like, fine. He doesn't have to be texting me all the time. I don't have that same PTSD, but I think it was really important that he, met me where I was and like tolerated the PTSD effects that I was having in the beginning of our relationship. That's really fortunate. That's that really, that, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I like that's amazing. Wouldn't even be willing to, to hear what your thought process is, let alone be willing to like act in a way that would help you develop that trust that you're seeking. Yeah. And yeah. when you know, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. But no, I just think that's important. We do have to remember that you sometimes have to like make sacrifices and meet people where they are and like be willing to walk people through things because I think sometimes like after having been cheated on it is hard to walk away from the relationship like you were saying and like how you stayed with him and I Mm -hmm. remember like when I was cheated on I was like at the point where I was ready to like say goodbye to that relationship and the guy was like no no like he was about to go to college he was like please come move me into college like Mm. And when he like had started in college, he was really unhappy and like wasn't making friends and stuff. And I like became kind of a crutch for him, you know, and like really we should have ended when he cheated on me over the summer. He cheated on me when he was at summer camp because he was a counselor and I was like at an acting conservatory in France and like I should have been enjoying my time in Europe. I've talked about this before, but no, no, I was like, you know, calling him, like spending my parents' money on the like international service, um, yeah. random part of Pennsylvania while I'm in France. But regardless, like that relationship, like like it's so hard to walk away from them when you're so attached and when you're in those situations that I do think these conversations are like important to carry with you that like when something like cheating happens, sometimes even if you think that you can work through it, the working through it is going to be actually harder than like dealing with the cheating itself. I agree. It, it's a lot of work and it's it's really hard and people just need to be aware of what they're getting themselves into when they're taking someone back from cheating because it's a lot. And you need to be fully um, ready to let go of everything that happened in the past to move on. Because if you can't do that, then there's the cheating's going to happen again, or you're just never going to be able to get over it. You're going to turn into a nervous wreck and you're going to make them your priority rather than yourself and your own health. Yeah. We weigh all pros and cons for you know what we 
shop for. So why wouldn't we do the same for especially like a romantic relationship? Exactly. Yeah. And like you were saying, and I mean, even in your current relationships, are you going to take somebody back? Like when they, you've been cheated on, I do think it's important to ask yourself, like, is this person going to meet you where you are then? Cause like what you were talking about and the trust issues that you had and how you became dependent on that relationship, are they going to be okay with that? Are they going to be willing to like accept the effects of what they have done when you take them back? Like that's important. Yeah. And mine wasn't mine. I would have expected for them to work way harder on the relationship, but it was, it probably got worse because it was just more gaslighting and more me walking on eggshells, more eggshells than I was in the past. Cause it still wasn't the greatest relationship, but it yeah. just got worse after that. You would think that someone, you know, after being taken back is getting a second chance would want to work really hard and prove that they're not that person. But no, this one was the complete opposite. And that's a learning experience. Then, you know, yeah. Definitely. And I, I definitely came out stronger out of that. And I wouldn't have been able to go through all of the other heartbreaks that have gone through after this relationship if I hadn't gone through it, because I'm so much stronger than I was. And yeah. now I can really deal with things and like, you know, compartmentalize and just know what's important and what's not and move forward with the rest of my relationships. That's why I like all of these ghosting stories and all of my relationships now are more of like, I use it as com- comedic relief. One of my favorites. Yeah. Things life doesn't always work according to plan, but life's plan always works for you. Because I like think back to all of the relationships that I was in and how hard they were and like the insecurity. And it like bothers me sometimes thinking about all the time I wasted on them that I could have been focusing on my career. But I also know that I'm so much more Mm -hmm. empathetic for through having gone through them that like, I understand people so much better. And like I'm stronger through having gone through them that like, I'm okay. Like I don't regret the decisions I made and it took me a long time and a lot of therapy to get to that place, but I don't regret my serial dating. I don't regret taking people back from having cheated because it all got me to where I am today and I'm okay with that person, you know? So I just think that like when you are going through those cheating type situations, you just have to remember that like, this is part of the plan. Like this too shall pass. And this is just another challenge for you to get over and you will. And you have to remember that like, maybe this isn't the relationship that isn't going to work out for you. And guess what? That's okay. Because I don't think relationships are always like the end all be all. I think that there's multiple soulmates. And like, I think that you can find your soulmate in like the strangest of places. Sometimes I think Ernie is my soulmate, you know? No. Like, <laughs> I think that like there's so many different types of relationships and honestly friendships that are there for you and that are all part of the plan that will help you get through these types of situations. You had mentioned once before too, how, you know, your partner is supposed to compliment you. As you were speaking, that's exactly what came to mind, where it's just like, it shouldn't be, I'm in this relationship, it should all be about that, but it should definitely be reciprocal as far as just like how much each person is supporting the other intellectually, creatively, emotionally, all of it. Yeah, Yeah, your relationship should never define who you are. And your partner should always just be an add-on, like an extra bonus. And I think that's what Brian is for you, which is awesome, because now you've like healed from all of the past trauma with relationships and like you said, you'll be okay with Brian or without Brian, which is huge because obviously, yes, it doesn't speak to your relationship. It speaks to you and how strong you are. And you're so okay with yourself and you're so happy with yourself being by yourself that you don't need anyone else to make you happy, you know, and that's amazing. And I want that for literally every single person that I know. Thank you. And me. I want it for me too. (laughs) (laughs) I think Instagram makes us think so much about, is this person a good representation of me? And I think the question we really should be asking is like, if you strip everything down, if the physical doesn't exist, if the social media presence doesn't exist, Do you like who this person is at their core? Do you believe that person is a good person who's always going to be there for you and support you on your worst days and your best days? Because that's also a problem with people who like don't want to support you when you're doing your best, you know, jealousy is a thing. And if you can say like, yes, I think this person is amazing, then that's what you should be asking in these situations, like where you're being cheated on, because I want to stress that, that like, I I do think you can recover from being cheated on. I do think that there's people who make mistakes, but if you, if you don't strip everything down and say that, like, yeah, I think this is the person who's going to be strong with me throughout everything that we're going to go through in life, because nobody's pretty in the end, 
Like, do you wake up on a Saturday and you guys want to do the exact same things? If you can say all of those things, then yeah, give the relationship a shot. But if you can't say those things, if you can't say that, like, this is the best person that I know, then, you know, take a second look at your, what you're making the decisions for in this situation. Yeah. And I think it's important not to settle because I think we've talked about it, how people tell all of their friends, this is my person. This is amazing. Da, da, da. And then once something goes wrong and you st- step out of it, you're like, why did I say all those things? Like, I, I don't, I didn't actually believe that this person was amazing. And I did that for the 36 year old whose name I shall not say. Um, I was, I did that to you guys too, to you and Sophia. I was like, no, this is like, he's amazing. He's like, you listen, I did that to my friends too. And I knew at the back of my head, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Like that's not true. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do that when they're not with the, the, the right person and they know they're not with the right person, but they try to justify all of their other shitty behaviors and try to make them like settle. Yeah. Well, guys, another episode of damsels <laughs> in the DMS. Did we reach a conclusion on once a cheater, always a cheater? Mm, I think as with everything, it all depends. I think it's dependent too. I think you got, I think after this conversation, I, I am going to say it's dependent on the situation and the person. Yes, definitely. Yes. But don't cheat. Cheating is so bad. Don't do it. It hurts. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please write us with your cheating stories, your ghosting stories. We want to hear all of them. And uh, follow us on Instagram at Damsels in the DMs and subscribe on all of your podcasting platforms at Damsels in the DMs. Until next time. It's going down in the DMs. Bye. Bye. <laughs> DMs, DMs. We don't need them. We just leave them. Please. Yeah. It's going down in the DMs. Bye.